Hello, my name is John Salahi, and this presentation is going to be over Iranian folk music. So, for context, Iran is a strong power in the Middle East. Um, it stems from the Persian Empire, uh, has plenty of natural resources, and is a center for economy, culture, and education. Uh, their government is an Islamic Republic combining democracy and theology, which is kind of not what we're used to. Um, so the majority of people are Persian. They speak Farsi, um, but that can entail kind of a diverse background. Um, they also have many Turkic and Arabic elements in their history, as well as many uh, smaller uh, ethnic groups. There we go. So Zoroastrianism uh, is a is a type of religion. It was the first monotheistic religion, and it was the religion of many Persian kings before Islam kind of became more prevalent. Um, music was a large part of this religion, and it occur encouraged uh, people who practiced it to to sing. Um, Islam, however, kind of prevented a lot of that from happening they had a lot of restrictions on who could do what and where music should be performed um so they kind of limited it to military events and, and private celebrations um this kind of prevented formal musical disciplines from developing uh, due to these restrictions so they didn't really have a, a formal kind of um what do you, how do you say, uh, uh, discipline until the, the 1800s. So it kind of took them a long time. Folk music was passed down from older generations to the younger. That's kind of how a lot of people learned how to perform different kinds of music. And that will be touched on quite frequently throughout this presentation. So um, because Zoroastrian had such strong roots, making music kind of such an integral part of their culture, they they are still able to to perform this music um so kind of influences and similarities so kind of persian modes are very comparable to to greek modes that's kind of a big similarity and you know for historical context the persians and the greeks fought in in large wars and and kind of before that they there's always been a trade system so that's that's definitely it it very much makes sense um chromaticism is not used which is similar to greeks and uh contrary to popular belief the quarter tone does not exist in iranian music iranian music also is sounds very similar to eastern or other middle eastern and central asian music um which which also makes sense it's kind of in the same Route, like same geographical area and uh of course zoroastrianism provided much of the content i think i forgot to mention the uh so let me go back that's okay um the avesta was a a book um is kind of the zoroastrianism holy book um but that provided many 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 songs that that uh, people use and still kind of sing and perform today. So here's an example of some Iranian folk music. We'll just play a bit of this. So yeah, you can you can go back through this and and kind of listen to to more of it if you'd like to. But that's kind of a good intro, it, the long intro section to see kind of features the instruments uh, that we'll go over here in a bit. Uh, all right, all right, moving on. So uh, 
traditional Persian instruments, what's really cool about Persian instruments is I think that they kind of, they have a very rena renaissance kind of feel to them, it, to me at least, it's a very unique sound and that kind of contributes to their, the overall uh, tone color and, and distinct, distinct uh, sound that it gives. There's no brass instruments that are, are used commonly in this uh, form, the genre of music. So we have in the percussion, there's the tombak and the daf. Um, string instruments include the dotar, kamanche, contour, tar, and sitar. Uh, some are bowed, uh, some are struck, some are plucked. Um, many of those are lute inspired which is really cool that's kind of why i draw the connection to the renaissance in europe and uh like i said these these help the, the way they are um the the lute inspired you know that kind of contributes to that iconic sound they also have a flute it's called the ney um has six holes plus one thumb hole uh, instruments also vary throughout different regions of Iran. So, you know, the north might have different uh, uh, instruments than, say, the, the southwest kind of deal. Moving on, uh, so kind of how to learn, as previously mentioned, uh, there's a lot of government restrictions in, on music. Uh, folk music, it kind of seems like there's less of those because folk music is, is more kind of towards their culture, a lot of their restrictions revolve around uh, either who can perform music or what kind of music is performed, so they're very against Western music. But folk music is, is totally, you know, it doesn't seem to have a lot of roadblocks. But due to those restrictions, the country did not even establish a conservatory until the 1900s, 1918 specifically. And like I said, the, the no formal disciplines came out until the early 1800s. So the conservatory is a, is a place for people to learn. Uh, the conservatory is in their capital, Tehran, and it is the largest university in the country. Before 1918, uh, and, and still to this day, like I had previously mentioned, and, and I said would come, out, uh, come back again, it, music is primarily trash, uh, sorry, passed down through oral training from generation to generation. Um, folk music can be found everywhere, though, so, so you don't have to be in Tehran or any other place to, you know, that has a formal kind of place of learning music. Um, music's all over, from small villages to the, to the biggest cities, which is really cool. So here's another... Uh, um, song that we can listen to. I'll kind of skip to the middle of it if I can. Maybe I can't. Sorry. That's okay. Okay. Yeah, there we go. So what's really interesting is I kind of draw the connection to, to Indian music where it sounds very similar. However, I, I, I know that Indians or Indian music has a, a lot more kind of sliding to, to and from notes, uh, but this has as less in just that little bit we, we listen to, but you're more than welcome to listen to more of this, you know, at your own leisure. Okay. So what is Persian music? Um, Persian music was fully developed in the 19th century, like I said. Their formal discipline, kind of their foundation, is called radif, or radif. Uh, there are seven modes, and those seven modes are ca called uh, dasta. Uh, and there are sub-modes and five uh, derivate modes derivate modes, sorry if I'm saying that wrong, Avas. 
Um, so with these formulas of music, there are many opportunities for improvisation. So um, the same piece performed in the same setting can have different form, melodic ideas, tone, uh, etc. Outside of the Avesta, that, that uh, holy book that I was mentioning earlier, many songs focus on the life cycle, agriculture, and religious ceremony. So that's kind of relating to the content of these songs. So this is a video on Radif. Um, like I said, Radif is kind of their their principal um, discipline. Yeah, so, I mean, the the melodies, like I said, kind of go back to the, the other slide in, in the sense of they are, uh, it's it's like a foundation for many different songs, and then um, a, lot of improv, a lot of improvisation is used, sorry. It kind of reminds me of, of kind of American jazz almost, how, you know, we have the real book with many head tunes, and... Uh, then people improvise over the chord changes. Okay, let's see if we can go to the next slide. Okay, so here is another musical example. Um, this kind of again just shows off the instruments and and voice of, of the musicians. And you can see this is in a rural area too. Just what a what a unique sound. Okay. Sorry about that. I'm in the library. Um Okay. So, in conclusion, you know, um, Iran's a very culturally diverse place, and um, folk music doesn't even come from their primary kind of religious uh, beliefs. It comes from Zoroastrianism, which is now a very small um, population in, in that culture. Most folk music comes from the Avesta, though. That is their, their holy book with many, 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 many songs. Um, the unique sound is contributed to their instruments. Um, you know, like I said, no brass instruments, stringed instruments that are plucked, bowed, and um, struck. As well as, you know, it's, it's all, it's not Western instruments, you know. Nothing we're used to hearing. Radif, which is their kind of predincipal, or sorry, their principal musical discipline, um, which is uh, is also kind of very unique to, to them, but it sounds like Central Asian and Middle Eastern countries, as well as kind of connections to Greek modes. Um, and the way that music is shared throughout their culture, aside from formal training at, at schools, like the... Uh, conservatory in Tehran is uh, generations teaching younger musicians how to perform due to the restrictions put in place by um, by Iran and, and the government primarily. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation. I hope this was very helpful. Sorry for the weird kind of cuts um, and the, the announcement that went off, but yeah.
Không chị đề.